Hi besties, welcome back to my channel. Today, we have a get ready with me. I haven't done that in so long. I don't know why, I just haven't. Today, I wanna get ready because I am going to be doing like a little at home photo shoot by myself. I'm gonna try and take some self portraits on film just to see how they come out. I've been wanting to do a photo shoot on film for a minute, but I have not done that as of yet. So I figured, why not just do it myself? I have a film camera, I'm good at taking pictures. I'm pretty and I got a million tripods and lighting and shit like that. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. I want to talk about how to stop caring what people think. And I kind of want to talk about like anxiety and like how I was shy. Just kind of go into that whole journey of mine while doing my makeup and drinking some ginger tea and just chilling out with you guys. So we're going to do that and then I'm going to take the pictures. And if you're curious to see how the pictures come out, eventually I will post them on my Instagram, Ash Flores TV. It's going to take a minute because I got to take them get them developed and all that stuff but yeah that's what the video is today so i hope you guys enjoy let's get into it okay so my mirror's here my camera's there so i'll be facing here a lot but i know you guys are not here for the makeup you guys are here i don't know why you're here but i, I doubt you're here for the makeup so that's not the main focus of the camera here so pretty much oh my mood board is on the <laughs> Sorry if that's distracting. So pretty much, I wanna talk about this because I have dealt with being a shy person for majority of my life. I've also dealt with being anxious and, ooh, speaking of anxious, I haven't taken my medication yet. As I was beginning to say, I've dealt with anxiety and just like being shy in general for a big part of my life. Like, when I say big part of my life, I mean like 85% of it. So growing up, I was really shy. Like when I say shy, I mean, let me give you an example of how shy I was. One of my earliest memories in school is when we were singing um, Oh Canada. Oh my God, I think I was like five or six years old. My nose was running like crazy. Like when I say it was running, I mean like slobbering down my face, okay? Oh Canada was kind of wrapping up. We were doing the prayer. I went to Catholic school and I was so shy. I was like, in my head, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I have to ask for a tissue. I don't have a tissue and I was panicking. So we're like <sighs> on my sleeves and stuff like that. So then like, you know, O Canada and all that stuff was over and like the teacher was kind of like ready to go and we were just kind of sitting there for a minute and I was like, okay, how am I gonna go to the teacher and ask her for a tissue? I was panicking my mind. I was so shy. I couldn't even ask her that I just ended up having like snot all down my face just <sighs> for like minutes and minutes until the teacher looks at me and she comes up to me. She's like, Ashley, do you need a clean here, let me go get you a Kleenex. And she comes up to me and she brings me a bunch of Kleenex and she's like, you can go to the bathroom if you want. And then she walked me to the bathroom and then I went to the bathroom and I cried, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember, I just remember feeling so shy. Um, another memory I have is that there was this boy that I liked. He brought chocolate jello pudding to school quite often. I had the biggest crush on him. One day my mom packed me chocolate jello pudding and I didn't eat it because I didn't want him to see me and think that I was copying him because I liked him and I just had this whole spiral in my mind of just like, oh my God, he's gonna think that I got jello pudding because of him and that like I like him so much, he's gonna know and the blah, blah, blah. And like, what if he talks to me? Oh my God, I don't wanna talk to him, I'm so shy. Like, that's how shy I was, okay? Like, that was just like a little intro so you guys can understand. Like, when I say I was shy, I don't mean like, oh, I couldn't public speak. I mean like, I was shy. Like, I couldn't even fucking do anything. And my shyness was this intense probably until Oh my god, like grade seven. And then um, slowly I started coming out of it a bit because I was in dance. And the only time that I was able to get out of my shyness was when I was on stage and I did dance recitals or competitions, things like that. Um, I was like thriving on stage. Like I, I like lit up. My mom always said to me, she's like the reason why I convinced your father to spend so much money on dance and like competitive dancing and gymnastics is because I never saw you shine like the way that you did on stage. I don't know what it was about those stages and being in front of the camera and stuff like that. I thrive. <sighs> Regular environments. Hell no. I was shy as shit. I will get into how to break out of it. I just want to give you guys a backstory. Um, so then like Pretty much, oh, I gotta do my makeup slower because I do my makeup so fast that I always end up just finishing. So then, as I got older, I went to high school, still shy, never had a boyfriend in high school, never even talked to guys in high school, like situationships, nothing, because I was too shy. Um, I was really quiet in my classes if my friends weren't in it. I was the type of shy that if I was around my friends, you would hear me and I would like actually like have a personality. But if I had no friends around, I was alone. Like I literally like 
had a lunch um, because we had different lunch sections. There was like A lunch, B lunch, C lunch, and I had C lunch and all my friends had A lunch, so I actually sat in the bathroom stall. <laughs> like in Mean Girls, like I, I legitimately sat in the stall, but I wasn't like sad. I was just sitting there like, I'd rather be here. And that was because I wasn't comfortable eating alone, and then finally by the second semester, I was like, bitch, I'm tired of eating by the toilet. Like, I, I just started to, um, at that point, sit in the cafeteria alone. Which in high school, I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're in high school, it's serious. And I think that's probably why I'm so comfortable solo dining now. A lot of people ask me why I'm, I'm like so, like I love solo dining. I think it has to do with the fact that I spent high school, um, some semesters, not all of them, honestly, like maybe, maybe like one or two semesters um, eating alone. I was just kind of forced into getting used to it. Okay, so then I graduated, you know, I came out of my shell, whatever, whatever. I will say that I identified with being shy until 2019, no, 2020. To my core, I'm still quite introverted. However, I don't think I'm shy anymore. I'm not shy anymore, which is really cool. I learned how to talk to people through the pandemic as weird as that sounds. I think that being forced into isolation made me appreciate social interactions in a way that I probably wouldn't have because I dreaded social interactions. So a big part of my past relationship in 2019 or so was that I wasn't outgoing enough for him, which at the time I believed. Now I look back and I'm like, um, I was just exactly who the fuck I was and the fact that he had a problem with that had nothing to do with me. <laughs> but at the time I was like, I need to learn how to be more outgoing for him, I need to be better with people, I need to do it. I have no regrets because at the end of the day, I did need to make that change for myself and my career and what I do. However, the reasons why I made the changes were for that person and that's kind of crazy, but that's also on me. Anyways, I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, I'm just being real, okay? So, in 2019 or so, I had a lot of pressure on me to like get along better with this person's friends and like you know socialize better with the people that he brought around or whatever so I started to really try to be outgoing like I was like forcing myself out of my shell and um yeah like it started there and then we broke up and I wanted to get back so I was like I'm gonna learn how to be outgoing so that when we get back together like I can like you know interact with his friends and dumb shit like that but also 2020 hit um, just a reminder, there were many breakups, so if you're confused, it's because there were many breakups. 2020 hit, and suddenly, I was heartbroken, my cat died, the world was fucking ending, and I was like, I need to change. Um, I was isolated, of course, and I was living alone, so I suddenly was, like, ready to go on this, like, spiritual journey again, and, and learn how to be outgoing, so I started to make that a priority, like, I'm gonna learn how to be a people person. I also miss people. So every time I would have the smallest interaction, this is where it started, like learning how to be more outgoing. Oh my God, I'm getting makeup all over my sweater. I practice with small interactions. And what I mean by that is, okay, so during the pandemic, there wasn't much I could do, of course. I mean, I live in Toronto, so there was nothing to do. I would go get a burger and pick up takeout and I would make it my job to have an interaction while picking up my burger or getting like getting takeout, you know what I mean? Whatever it was that I did, I made a point to make the most out of the interaction so that I could practice my people skills. And there were many times that I would try to make conversation and I didn't know how, so I would just make it fucking awkward and then I'd go to my car and be like, oh my god, actually, oh my god, that was so fucking weird. Why did you say that? And then I got over it and then it happened again. And I'm like, fuck, Ashley, you're so fucking weird. Why did you just, 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 just next time just keep your mouth shut, walk in, get your burger, walk out. And then I'd get over it. And then it happened again. And it was just like a lot of awkward situations for me that probably weren't awkward. They probably only felt awkward because I was so in my head about it. And it took a few of those for me to feel a little more comfortable with like either rejection or reactions that you know weren't what i wanted or whatever it was so for example like sometimes i'd strike up a conversation and like the other person wasn't really having it and i'd have to learn how to deal with that rejection that's not really rejection it's just rejection if we choose to spin that narrative on it right we can perceive it how we want to perceive it we have choices in this world you know we can choose to be like hey 
they don't want to fucking talk to me and um it's because what i said was weird or we can look at it as hey maybe they're not in the mood to talk to anybody because they're having a weird day we don't need to spin a narrative on any situation we just do our best and whoever wants to go with that will go with it so through 2020 i was trying to network a bit more because i found that i had all this creative energy and no creative friends and i was like this is weird so every time i was like put in a situation with um whoever like people would introduce me to their friends my braids are kind of fucked up now so please do not judge them um i mean they've always been fucked up but yeah people would put me in situations uh introduce me to their friends and i would learn how to make the most of it i started to look up how to talk to people and a book that really helped me really helped me is a book called how to talk to anyone um it's exactly what it sounds like it's a book that literally teaches you how to talk to anybody i listened to it on the scribed app i also have the physical book i actually thrifted it but i found it on the scribed app and it's only 9.99 or something a month i don't remember i would go for long walks and listen to that book and it tells you how to talk to people and how to network and how to like even flirt and things like that oh by the way i was really bad at flirting like i was really bad at flirting i think naturally i had a flirtatious energy and that was enough you know to keep people like around me but if i tried to flirt i was absolutely garbage at it <laughs> garbage at it so yeah in this book it literally teaches you how to talk to people and one of the biggest tips i ever 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 learned that if you're gonna take anything from this video it's this is that people love to talk about themselves if all else fails and you don't know how to engage with someone ask them about their self see what makes their eyes sparkle and then run with that topic so for example i've noticed that you know a lot of people that i've talked to like they start lighting up when they talk about their fucking dogs and I'm just like I don't get it because I'm not a dog person I'm a cat person but I'm not a dog person so I'll be like what's his name oh it's a girl oh okay cool how long have you had her blah 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 blah. oh wow and then I'll offer like a little bit of information about me like yeah like you know like I remember my friend's dog and blah blah blah, blah. and I'll tell them a mini story and I'll be like has that ever happened to you and I try to like make them feel special and this is not something you need to do for the entirety of the relationship just the first initial interactions to get people's like to get you on their radar really so for example let's say you're starting work and you're like i should do a whole video on like how to talk to people i'm gonna do a whole video on it but this is just like some small advice you know um let's say you're starting a new job and you're trying to learn how to talk to your coworker. literally just start with small talk hey like has it been a slow day today oh my god yeah my old job blah 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 blah. i'm like ask them like how do you like working here how long have you been here oh cool you've been in the industry for a while now oh like how did you start out that's really cool oh my goodness like wow i'm actually happy to meet someone that's been in the industry for a while because i can learn from you so like if you have any tips feel free to share them make them feel fucking special kiss their ass because that will get them to warm up to you and once they warm up to you they let their guard down and they start to talk to you like a normal human rather than as some new coworker that just started avoid small 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 talk like avoid like hey how's your day going like ask them more personal questions without being too invasive and just start practicing like that that's how i learned to talk to people and i learned that from the book and because of that i have <sighs> I've really gotten good with my people skills. I won't lie to you. I keep flipping this hair back and forth. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's noticed that. But yeah, I've gotten really good with my people skills. It's so weird to know that like Ashley Flores is good with people. Like that's something very new to me. Very new to me. So that's how I learned to talk to people. There's more to socializing than just like talking to people, of course. There is maintaining relationships. There is breaking out of your shell. I think breaking out of your shell is likely a reason why you might have clicked on this video. I broke out of my shell by forcing myself out of my shell. And I know that's probably not what you want to hear because it's not always easy to force yourself. I've heard a quote from a few people, no pressure, no progress. And I, I really liked that quote. It really resonated with me because in order to progress in life, you need to be put in a corner sometimes. You need some pressure. It's like, you know, if you're someone who thrives under pressure for example in school leaving your assignments to the last minute without that last minute timeline coming around would there be any progress hopefully but if you're like me 
Hell no, you need the pressure in order to progress. Is it all in our heads? Possibly. However, it's still a thing, man. It is still a thing. So with this quote, the reason why this relates to this topic is that in order to progress, of course, you need pressure, but uh, pressure comes from being uncomfortable, I find. And you need to put yourself in uncomfortable situations in order to learn how to thrive. So what that means is you need to put yourself out there and feel awkward and feel shy and let yourself feel shy acknowledge the feeling tell yourself hey i feel shy right now hey i'm uncomfortable but i'm gonna keep going you know what i mean if you're in an elevator and it's fucking awkward and you decide to be like how's your day going i know those 30 seconds leading up to the how's your day going is gonna be like okay are you gonna say it are you gonna say it? okay just say it just say it and you ask them and it's awkward but that's okay because that's practice the next time you do it you just do it again and it's awkward and you practice until you are like desensitized to the feeling of feeling uncomfortable in those situations you know what i mean let me put my eyeliner on hold on sometimes you just have to force yourself and i know that's not the advice you want to hear some of you but the thing is like you don't really have a choice you know, if you really want to make this change, if it's very important to you, you need to be uncomfortable. If it's not that important to you, then sure, fuck it, who cares, you know? Like, I'm not judging, whatever. But if you're someone like me, that your career depends on you being a people person or being more outgoing or being friendly, more sociable, like, you kind of have to do what you have to do, you know? I learned how to network. I'll give you an example. Before, when I used to see people that I knew in public, a lot of times I would pretend I didn't see them or wait for them to approach me. I went to an event the other month in December and it was full of creatives. It was just like my vibe. Like it was so cool. It was a woman run um, event and like it was cool. There's just some pictures from it if you want to see. And I bumped into someone that I knew there and it was very easy to just pretend like I didn't see him because we haven't seen each other in a minute. We haven't met that many times and our mutual is my ex so it's like very easy to just you know look away which he could have done and i could have done but i'm like okay no i see him i made eye contact with him and i went out of my way to say hello he was very open to it very friendly you know this is something i wouldn't have done in the past anyway so we get to talking his friend pulls up they say hi he introduces us we talk for a brief moment turns out the friend is in the industry as well and he does something that i would love to collaborate on so we networked we followed each other on instagram we got to talking and he's like hey i'm looking for this for something upcoming 2022 like blah blah, blah. i was like yeah reach out to me and blah 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 follow each other connection right there if i never talked to that guy and said hello I would have never been introduced and you know what i mean like that benefits me and it could also benefit the person i was speaking to you know the new person i met ow i just freaking got mascara on my eye yeah like that's an example so oh my god what if i made like worksheets on this topic oh there's so many ideas i have when anything would anybody be interested in like a worksheet on this like exercises like Things like, I don't know, like I just feel like it'd be a really cool worksheet because that book, I wished it had worksheets in it and it didn't. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, so it's very important to learn how to talk to people if you're someone who needs to network. By the way, I'm putting little rhinestones on my eyes. I just want to remind you guys that like, no one's going to do shit for you. Like, you could sit around your whole life being mad at yourself for being shy, but what is that gonna do, you know? What is that gonna do for you? You need to put yourself out there and make yourself uncomfortable and you know just deal with it just deal with it like growth does not come from the comfort zone growth comes when you branch out and force yourself to be uncomfortable and adapt we are human beings the beauty about being a human is that we adapt so just remember that you will get used to it and it, you will be okay with it eventually like i never ever ever thought that i could sit here today and say i'm not shy sometimes i still say i'm shy because i'm so used to saying that i'm shy and i'm like you know what i'm not shy anymore if i can do it i promise you you could do it you could do it i literally didn't show anybody my youtube channel for a year and a half because i was too shy i waited until i hit 100 subscribers because i didn't want anybody to see it until i knew that like I had somewhat of like a platform or like at least like a hundred people thought I was like decent. So 
I was like, if 100 people think I'm good enough, then I can show people that I know. So nobody I knew saw my YouTube channel for a year and a half. Isn't that crazy? I'm very proud of myself. And I think that if you're someone that sits around kind of sad that no, like that you know that you have more potential and you're not reaching it, like don't allow yourself to just do nothing about it. Please, please, please. I do want to make a follow-up video on this, just like how to talk to people. So... Maybe I'll just name my video the title of the book, How to Talk to Anyone, and just like be totally transparent and like using methods I learned from the book because honestly I learned a lot of it from that book. Other videos too, but mostly that book. So maybe I'll do that. So if you have questions or certain areas that you want some advice on, leave it in the comment section of this video so that I know to make sure to cover that because I don't want to just ramble. I think for that video I'm going to have it more structured out. You know, so leave me questions or if you have any tips, feel free to leave those as well so that we can kind of just like read the comment section and anybody struggling can see some additional tips that you guys have. But yeah, I feel like um, we're all here for a reason. You clicked on this video for a reason, so do something about it. You know, my braids are fucked up. I really got to take these out. <laughs> like they're actually fucked up. <laughs> Like, look at this one. <laughs> um, I still gotta do my edges and make sure my hair is like looking a little more cleaned up because right now it looks like a little fuzzy because I can't find one of my bonnet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a little like, a little thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you're new. You already know the dealio. Do you guys like my makeup also? I like when I do this foundation because you can still see my freckles. I use Fenty if anyone's curious. You can still see my freckles. You can still see my skin. I like that. I don't like full coverage on my skin personally. But yeah, okay. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give a like. I already said that. Um, I'm rambling now. I'll see you guys next time. And I will do a follow-up video on how to talk to anybody because I feel like this topic, like, we only scratch the surface. You know, there's so much more to discuss and we will get there yeah <laughs> okay bye guys i will see you when i see you